Um, okay, so uh, we're having a conversation. This is uh, for my friend Mo. And we were just on the ladder just now talking about how Mohammed violated every one of the Ten Commandments. And Mo came to me afterwards and talked. To, we wanted to talk about the subject of lying. Do you yeah, want to explain a bit more? Because, because, to be honest with you, I read it in Arabic and um, it, it makes a bit difference. Is it not working? Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, Mike says. Because, because, to be honest with you, I have read the, the verse which, which your friend was speaking about. And in Arabic, it makes a big difference between the thing which she mentioned and she explained and the literal wording of the verse itself. The, the literal wording of it like the, itself says if you see an unbeliever, for example, or someone who believes in another religion, out of respect, you have to show that it's like it's somehow okay instead of going and, for example, attacking someone or just like believing in something else. That's why it says tohtia means showing something and not hiding hatred or anything like this. Is, is, is that what Muhammad did? I'm talking about the verse itself. So I think my Mo here is talking about, I think it's Surah 328. I think so, yeah. Okay, and I'll read it for you. And the verse says, Let not the believers take the disbelievers as Olia, supporters, helpers, instead of the believers. And whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way, except if you indeed fear a danger from them. And Allah warns you against himself, and Allah is, Allah is the final return. Now, the thing is, in order to properly understand this verse, we have to go back to the tafsirs, don't we? True. That, but, true. But, but just a second. But if, if there is like a, 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 the, the one who I've read it in my eyes, and the, like I take the, the literal approach of interpretation, which says literally, as I said, if you see, for example, my friend, he, he believes in something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, out of respect and in order not to, for example, harm his feelings, I wouldn't show anything bad against him. Although, for example... But what, case, what about in inside? I know that you say that you wouldn't show anything bad to him, but what about what's inside? The most important thing is not to harm your feelings. That's the, that's is that the most important thing? That's, that's quite interesting. Matters, you. Do you think... You can cannot, I ask you a question? But you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot control whatever like the other the other individual in front of you is mm -hmm. feeling you know mm -hmm. what i mean if he feels that for example i am saying the wrong thing then obviously i wouldn't go and just like attack him for for his feelings or for his beliefs but so this is it really interesting because actually what you're saying can i just finish my point yes is that you're saying correct me if i'm wrong that the most important thing is, is that you don't feelings. harm the other person yeah. now here's the interesting thing okay firstly um in life, right, in life, don't you think telling the truth is ultimately better than hurting of course, someone's of course feelings? The truth is the most important thing now, I course. agree. Now, now, the thing is, I agree with you, but you are actually not agreeing with Allah, okay? Because Allah is saying in this verse, well, but let's break this verse down a bit, okay? First of all, he says, let not the believers take disbelievers um, as Olia, as supporters, helpers and friends. Now that's really interesting because Muslims, that means Muslims are not supposed to take non-Muslims as their friends, okay? I've seen that as a parent. I've also seen that it's quite difficult um, to, to have, I don't know, there's a, it, 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 it's quite difficult. Um, but here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, uh, actually, what the, what the, um, what the tafsir of this verse says, it says, basically it says what Allah means here, it says, but you will, um, if you, unless, unless you feel danger from them. So if you feel endangered by them, then you can have them as friends. It's basically, as a, it's not true friendship. It's based on a kind of pretense. Now, if we're not sure about what this verse means, if we think it's a bit obscure, then you know, like with any of the Quran, you go back to what the original is saying, you go back to the original interpreters, so for example Ibn Abbas, and we read that on the ladder, but Ibn Abbas says what this means is that you can be friendly, you can smile to the disbeliever, but in your hearts you curse them. No, in your hearts you curse that's them. What, that's, that's not what the, the verse says, I promise, even in Arabic. But I just have one, I have what two things. What did you things. say, um, adoption is not allowed, that's a three, four, right? Uh, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head, is, sorry. Are you not supposed to follow the man? The, the Muhammad. What did he do? How did he interpret this? How did he live his life? Did did he say, "Oh, you're, you know, you can hear"? He said that he's a normal human being, and whatever. That's what he said. Whatever God sent to him, he conveyed the message to the, to the right. other people. He also said. He 
also can I, can said. I tell you one thing? Can I say one thing regarding the thing which my friend he said? She, he said as well as uh, anything which has been brought today. He said whoever like attack or uh, actually harm the feelings of the non-believers, especially Christians or like whoever believes in uh, Jewish, will, will be as if harming me myself. Oh no, wait a minute. That's that was said. for the Jews though. No, no, for the Jews. But so, so let, let's just, let's just well, question no, 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 it. No, 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 I, I will prove to you. Because when, when people had to leave Al Medina, yep. as they said, he, he said that there is a really good ruler just like a few kilometers. I'm not sure about the distance between this area and this area. But he said that there is one ruler which you will find the utmost fairness or the, the ultimate fairness in his in his city and it was in Habasha, which is uh, Eritrea now, I believe. Yeah. But sir, can I just get back to yeah. you on the subject of lying? Check, check it out, check sir, it out. I can I just can I just and he was Christian. He during, knows that he's Christian. During during Muhammad's lifetime he kicked out or killed basically everybody who is non Muslim of the Arabian Peninsula. No, 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 no. Yes, no. He did not kill. He did not kill. No, not at all. Oh. So you're reinterpreting but where we're you? Can, can I can I just get back to the so subject of lying? Yes, yes. Okay. No, because the, the thing one, one right? second, let me because I so you're saying you're, this, I'm this, responsible this. for numerous deaths and bloodshed, right? Uh, yes, I am. Has that ever taken place under Christianity before? Uh, bloodshed and violence? Oh, so so what you're saying is, if Christians... Okay, let, let me just talk to you on the subject of lying. Here's the question. Again, again, like this gentleman was saying, if you're not sure about whether or not that kind of lying is permissible, again, where is the Muslim supposed to go? They're supposed to go also to the life of Muhammad. And we see that one of Muhammad's uh, wanted this gentleman assassinated, and then he said, uh, oh, but if I have to do that, then I have to lie. Let me, let me read that hadith to you, okay? To be honest with you, can I... Let, let, let's just do. I'll read this to you, and then you can make your point. Okay, don't worry. I'll make you let your points. Absolutely. Uh, where is it? Narrated. This is like narrated um, by Jabir bin Abdullah. Allah's apostle said, "Who is willing to kill Kaab bin al Ashra? He was hurt Allah and his apostle. Muhammad bin Maslama said, "Would you like me to kill him?" The prophet said, "Yes." Muhammad bin Maslama said, "Then allow me to say a false thing." The prophet said, you may say it, Bukhari, um, volume 5, 59 through 69. So we see from that that the, the Quran actually so sanctions lying that and that Muhammad lied himself. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you, do, would you want to be a Muslim based on that information? Or would you rather follow Jesus Christ who never lied? Who never, who the Bible is very clear about lying. I would actually rather follow whatever makes sense. Do you agree in this? Well, here's the thing. Because obviously, I know that killing is not good at all. It's, it's absolutely like bad, you know? But, um, yeah. What they were doing uh, was so, uh, this your, your question. Uh, I, I like the way that um, they were basically, I don't think God gives us the option um, to follow just what makes no, 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 sense no, no, because if what makes sense so to us in our human finite minds might not be the, the true uh, way. You know, we're, all of us, our minds are like, lead us one way, they lead us another. But I think God wants us to follow him as he's revealed himself to us. And he's revealed himself to us through Jesus coming to the earth and dying on a cross for us and living a perfect life and sending down teaching that is as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago, like love your enemy, pray for those who persecute you, let your yes be yes, yet your no be no. And in fact, Jesus says, we need to follow him. We need to follow him because of how we are naturally. Naturally speaking, uh, we've all fallen away from God, all of us. And we need his forgiveness. We need his forgiveness. I agree with you. Yes, yes. And we need forgiveness. So it's not right. I created, 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 created the others, and you know, now they didn't follow that. They ended up. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. So, do you feel yourself that you need forgiveness? Of course. Yeah. We all need forgiveness. So this is this is the so there's there's um here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. God is a holy God. Okay. God is so holy and He's so perfect that He cannot allow anything into heaven that is imperfect. By the way, I've read mainly the Quran and probably the whole Bible. Yeah. I know how to pray. I know everything. And then then if you look at the same time, can I be honest? Yes. Sure. I I do believe in 
the Ten Commandments in full. But there is one slight thing which I personally, in my mind, cannot take it. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can call me, as they said here, they are like, they don't know how to come to the end of the time. But I honestly do not believe that there is any human which is superior than that. Is that acceptable? I don't believe in levels between humans. In levels between humans, yeah, yeah. okay? They, Nor do uh, I. They want to speak his language. But I don't believe, why, why all, uh, but, but that's the thing. Jesus was not simply a human being. Like he was God <laughs> made flesh. He was given a miracle. I believe um, that okay. he was given a miracle, so, but I don't... Um, okay, I, very, I don't want to say it's like, like him. No, 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 no you can say whatever you like. You can say whatever you like. I understand I understand from people, maybe from a Muslim background, who have difficulty with the idea of Jesus being God made flesh. But here's the thing. God is God. God can do whatever he likes. God wants to come to the earth as the form of a man. That should not surprise us or shock us because he's God. The question is, why would he do a thing like that? And the Bible is really clear right from the beginning because our ancestors sinned against God. They turned their back on God. We've all inherited that mess. And all of us in, inside were a mixture of good and bad. And all of us are full of uh, bad thoughts, regrets. You know, like you get to my age, you can have a lot of regrets in life. And well, the fact is they need forgiveness. Because before a holy God said. who cannot tolerate this <laughs> so thing the Bible calls sin. So he says, but instead of saying, right, well, he gives us a choice. He goes, basically, when you get to Judgment Day, you can either say, come to me with all of this sin, and in which case I will punish you because I have to in my holiness, or there's another way. And that way is by God himself putting on flesh in the second person of the Trinity, in Jesus, and coming and dying on the cross, which is the punishment that you deserve, that I deserve. But instead of God putting that on us, God puts that on Jesus. I believe that God is in God order so has you more can fairness. be free. God, God has more fairness rather than like punishing his own son for all of us. Sorry, I'm tired. Should, I just, don't deserve. I just okay, from yeah, I will go with you. Yeah, so like, my brain I, I, is a little bit can you be somewhere I'm coming from? Yeah, I live in Sorry. I'm yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's say that. Come a bit closer to the mic. Yeah, yeah. Suppose, yeah. Like, okay, yeah. saying that Jesus is the son of God. I don't believe that God, with his ultimate fairness, will actually punish his son for the sins of people who do not deserve this. Uh, forgiveness. But here's the thing, sir. Here's the thing. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, let me, let me explain this to you. The thing is, what God, God doesn't like... This is why it's important that Jesus is a God man. He's God made flesh. God didn't just pick... You know, imagine that you've done something wrong, and this gentleman over there, God goes, right, I'm going to punish him. That would be really unfair. I agree. That would be really unfair, but that's not what God does in the person of Jesus. In the person of Jesus, he's God made flesh, and he comes down, the sinless one, so he's uniquely qualified yeah, so to take sin, the sins of other people. And he does it because he wants to. But Jesus says in John 10, he says, the reason my father loves me so uh, she, is because I lay down my life. Nobody takes and, uh, it from me, so but I lay so it down of my own accord. Jesus, Jesus it's Jesus' desire way. and his perfect will to do this for you. Okay, it's not anyone being mean. Okay, it's God's ultimate mercy. Imagine if your child was in going in front of a train. You would jump in front of that train, wouldn't you, and push the child out of the way even if you died. So that's how loving God is. God puts himself on the line so that you can live forever. Do you want it? The reason I got do, do you want it? Honestly, this is one of the hardest arguments, yeah, like, you know, would, because uh, you have a different view. Uh, my uh, only, so my only concern is that, you know, I still David, do not believe that God, with his fairness, and, you know, okay. he's the this just David Wood. Okay. He's got, right? Yeah. 500. And you can, I don't you think that, like, uh, uh, YouTube okay. videos, uh, <laughs> it's good. David Wood. But this is, to be honest with you, I've been in this space probably a hundred times, a thousand times, but this is one of the best conversations I've ever had. Well done. But anyway, Did you hear that? He said this is one of the best conversations he's ever had. I honestly mean it. I honestly mean it. Because many of the people, they don't know how to, to argue. They just have the, the basic pillars for actually like having a, a really decent argument. Which is a good thing. So, you know, I really appreciate that. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's not about the kind of person I am. I'm just an ordinary middle-aged no, 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 but, 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 but I want you, you more than anything. Really good it's like, you know, having a decent <laughs> argument. <laughs> this, this but, but, but please go away, not thinking about me and this conversation, but go away thinking about Jesus, who would die in your place. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he wants you, he, 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 he wants you to submit your life to him. That's the big thing. Are you going to do that? And it is worth it. It is so worth it. 
He wants to forgive your sin, cleanse you from everything, uh, give you a new heart, so, uh, yeah, put his Holy Spirit uh, in you, make you new from within. You don't have to go and follow this rule, yeah, that rule, yeah. this rule, no, that rule. He wants to put his love in your heart.